Well, you know, again, I'm, I'm, I'm so delighted to be here. I, I can't overemphasize how much uh, this means to me. Uh, I've been here in Atlanta since last summer, so it's been a year now. I, I'm starting my second year, which, as you, as you might already know, in the world of business schools and higher education now, is in itself you know, an accomplishment because there's a lot of turnover that goes on in, in, in academic leadership and a lot of changes every day that we see across the system. There are 30 uh, universities now within the state university system of Georgia, and then there are a whole bunch of uh, private schools, of course, uh, that are not state affiliated. So it's a very competitive market, uh, but, but it's a great place to be in. I moved from New Jersey um, last year after being there for 10 years, uh, Rutgers Montclair State, and um, yeah. thank you, thank you. I hope, I hope there's no Indian accent. <laughs> well, there are more Indians in New Jersey than, <laughs> than in Atlanta, I believe. But it's a great network to be a part of. And, and I, even before I moved to Atlanta, I heard of, um, I heard of you know, folks in, in this organization to a large extent, but, but particularly Dr. Narsi. I mean, you know, I, everybody knew him even from there, including people at Rutgers. So it, it, it's, it's absolutely, but they remember you and, and it, it's great to be here. And, and, and again, you know, thank you for the invitation. It really means a lot. It's all about the South. You know, um, when I came in, uh, I, I was talking to my colleague one day and, 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 you know, the colleague was saying, well, you know, there are problems in the South and, you know, there's not, there's too many disparities and the economic development is not happening. And I was wondering, what is he talking about? The South of the United States is doing actually very good economically. You know, a lot of migration has happened down South, you know, whether it's Atlanta, whether it's Dallas, or Houston. He was not talking about the South of the United States. He was talking about the Southern part of the Metro Atlanta area. And that's what we are going to talk about today. Um, and that's where Clayton State is located. Just to give a little background of the university, the way we will focus this talk today is I'll talk about what's happening in the South side, some of the key trends. And then I'll talk about the university and what we are doing. And then of course, how you, know, you can be a part of what we are, what we are trying to do. Um, Clayton State is you know, if you look at the five big universities in the metro Atlanta area, Clayton State is actually the only one south of I-20. So in terms of location, we define ourselves as the south of I-20 university. You know, and obviously, if you cross up to the north, you have you know, Georgia State, Georgia Tech, uh, Emory, Kennesaw State. There are just five AACSB accredited business schools in metro Atlanta. Uh, Clayton is one of the five and the only one on the south side. So if, if you think about it, that has been our geographic positioning. But you know, the way we have been able to use it to our advantage is something that we can improve upon. And that's why you know, we are here to talk about what we have done and also to position ourselves as a metro Atlanta institution and not just one for the south side. I mean, we all, we all know these statistics. And I, you know, we don't need to go over these things, really, because you have been in Atlanta for years, and, and all of you know what Atlanta stands for. There is a lot of things that Atlanta can boast about, right? It's, it's, it's a, the metro Atlanta is a city that has a lot going for it. I mean, you're looking at 29% of the workforce that is um, of, of, the, of the population under the age of 20, which in itself um, shows that there is, you know, there is obviously a large, vibrant, young population. I mean, when I go to some of the chambers of commerce events here, you, we, we always meet young entrepreneurs, just like we were talking about, you know, 25, 30 year old person who started this company and so on. We see that all the time. You're looking at, you know, the, the Georgia Tech entrepreneurs, but also a lot of other people that I keep meeting, meeting in, in, these, in these events are people who are really uh, at the prime of their youth and developing uh, new ideas and businesses and so on. So it's definitely an organization, it's, it's definitely an environment where there is a lot of, lot of dynamism. Uh, there is a lot of, obviously, you know, there are, uh, I understand, 65 streets with the word peach tree, but, um, but also there are a lot of, uh, lot of people in this, in, this, in this city, you know, that have been growing the, the, the economy. We are looking at 54,000 jobs being created. All the numbers that are there for the metro Atlanta area are, are, extremely, um, are extremely strong and, and, and positive. Um, one of the things that we started looking at in terms of the economic uh, analysis projects that we, st we, we started last year was to see whether we could look more on what was happening in the southern part of Metro Atlanta. And can we do an economic forecasting? Can we do an economic analysis as a university in that area? And that kind of led us to our next step, which really was, okay, so where, where are we going with this? I mean, you know, so these are some of the counties in the, in the area. The southern part is what we are talking about in this part of the presentation and, and, and some of the macro trends and indicators. So we know that there is a, there is a difference 
I mean, anybody who has been right in Metro Atlanta uh, for even a short period of time will know that the north side has developed um, a lot faster in, in a way which is very different from the development on the south side. Um, when, you know, I knew Mercedes Benz from New Jersey because I was, you know, we had a good association with them and from my university as well as personally, I did some brand management consulting work at one time and, you know, they moved. And not all of their executives moved. There were all kinds of reasons why some of them preferred to stay back in New Jersey and, and in fact, move to BMW. A lot of the Mercedes executives actually moved and joined BMW in New Jersey, but mostly personal reasons. And then there were people who, of course, moved and new people got hired here. But it's very interesting to see that Mercedes is here. There are a large number of auto companies that are coming in. I, you know, I just got to learn somewhere that 1,500 German companies, German origin companies work in Atlanta, have offices in Atlanta. That's a large presence. Uh, we at Clayton State Business School have tied up with a German university now uh, with a collaboration that would bring uh, German students over here. And like the German model, they will spend a whole semester in a company instead of in a classroom, which is really the hallmark of German higher education, as, as many of you know. Uh, it's an apprentice model that requires a student to spend the co-op semester, an entire semester, sometimes even more than a semester, within an organization. Um, so, so, you know, so, that, so that's, a, that's an interesting part of what's going on in, in the bigger picture. The southern metros, obviously, Clayton, you know, Faith, Henry, uh, and, and the others. And, and we have had, you know, I've become a member of the Chambers of Commerce of some of these organizations. There are economic development units that, uh, that reach out. So, you know, I'm, again, I'm not doing this analysis and presentation really as an economist in that sense, but more at a broader strategic perspective, right, as to what are some of the big indicators. And again, please feel free to, to add or ask any, any questions. Um, it is an emerging giant in the state. There are, these are quotes that have come from the Economic Development Units. Um, Bob White, who was the head of the uh, Henry County Development Authority uh, and was very well connected with everybody in the south side, uh, he just retired, uh, has been a big proponent of what's going on in that part of the, uh, of the, of the city and, and so on. So there, there were some trends. And again, we will come to some of the numbers and some graphs real quickly. But we know that there are now investments in, in real estate. Because obviously, the real estate prices between the north side and the south side are extremely different. And once the north side kind of saturates to some extent in terms of prices, it has gotten expensive and, and more expensive and obviously highly sought after. Uh, there is some development on the south side that are, that are picking up. There are, of course, planned communities like Peachtree City, but there are also areas that um, even in, in Clayton Faith and so on, or Henry, that are getting some attention now. Uh, the airport in the surrounding area, right, the aerotropolis, as we call it, is, is becoming a reality. I guess it's taking you know, time to develop into the idea that it was, but we are seeing a clear I mean, with Porsche out there and already the, you know, the test driving center out there where people are going to go out and, and take that test drive, um, and it's, it's, it's going to, there are signals that it's going to pick up to some extent. And, and there is also a big entrepreneurship boom in the south side in terms of at least discussing it as an idea. I mean, everybody that I meet talk about setting an an accelerator. And, and, you know, I think there are just too many people thinking about these things. We need to consolidate it. We need to make it work uh, with clear objectives. Obviously, ATDC has, has units in the south side, which, which, is very, which are very active. So there, there's a lot going on. But again, a lot of it has to be implemented because a lot of the counties do not always work in unison, as we know. And, and there, is, there is a need for things to work more at a, at a, at a, at a broader level. And again, the universities come in there. Yes. Right. What about the public school system in the South Side? Right. And, and again, I mean, the public school system has had some comeback as, as far as I understand. I mean, there was a time when there were school districts that lost their accreditation and, and some of that is back. So it, it, is, it is improved a little bit. There is a long way to go. The university, Clayton State, actually has the highest <coughs> dual enrollment program in the state of Georgia. So it's, it's, it's something that we boast of a lot because the gifted and talented students from the school districts come and take college credits before they graduate through the dual enrollment program. And that has helped 
you know, many students on the south side. They don't always join the university, however, obviously, because sometimes they do extremely well and they move on to universities that are more, uh, you know, higher on the, on, the, on the brand scale. And that's where one of the things that we are really trying to do is to position ourselves as a credible alternative. So, but that's absolutely right. It's the, it's the school system that's a problem. There is a lot of perception issues and, and there are, you know, so societal and political factors to consider as we grow, um, you know, reduce disparities and improve the whole overall economy in the South Side. So it, it, it is a challenge. And especially the consequence of that is yeah. attracting talented people to stay there. Right. Exactly. That is the real thing. Because the children cannot get good education. Right. Like you yourself live in Big Town. Right. Not, in, <laughs> right. not to pick on you. Right. But you, you, yes, I mean, and it's something that I see all the time with my colleagues. You know, a lot of them live in the north and commute down to Clayton. I mean, there are a lot. Uh, I have 45. Just by really focusing on the public schools. Right. Because these, you talk about the under 20, you know, the pretty soon Population, the yes. Families and so forth, they need, they need a reason to stay. Yes. Yes. And then the kind of companies that are moving in, you know, are they attractive enough for young professionals is a question because a lot of the people who do live in the south side, in, particularly in Faith, for example, or even in Henry County, actually work in the city. And, and so they commute up. And, and that's not good either. I mean, because there has to be some things out there for them to, to feel comfortable to work in. So those are, those are definitely big factors in, in promoting an overall, I mean, healthcare, for example, right? Health opportunities in Clayton County, there's the Southern Regional Medical Center in Clayton that is under serious financial trouble. And there has been discussions about having to shut down that facility. So there are some negotiations going on. But it's something that would have serious implications in terms of um, you know, people living there because obviously a large hospital like that has a lot of economic development around it and, and all the linkages. MARTA is back in Clayton County, which we all know. Uh, that was a, a big deal for the county. But again, the implementation and how that really works into the economic development is something to see. I want to talk about the film industry. We will mention that here you know, in the presentation because the South Side has been a large part of the Atl Metro Atlanta film industry. Uh, there is a growing film and entertainment presence in the state, as we all know. And, and you know, again, Clayton County has been trying to position itself as the Hollywood of the South. And, and there is a lot of, lot of energy around that, which is very exciting and, and, and very positive. There is a strong college presence. I mean, even though Clayton State is the only large you know, business school or, or, or university in that part. There are other, other schools in the area. There is Southern Crescent Technical College. There are other, other presence in University of West Georgia has started a campus. So we'll, we'll talk about that. Georgia State at one time had a presence in Newnan. They don't anymore, but, but you know, and so on. Um, so so there, there is more demand than supply. I think a lot more can be done in higher education there, but there are colleges that have come up there. There is Gordon State College, one of the state colleges also. Um, so there are some signs of revival. And one of the key questions is, you know, what, how does the university play a role in the revival? And how do business leaders like yourselves from the Metro Atlanta area play a part in that revival and be, be, a, be, a, be, a, be a part of that? I'll just, some broad graphs, right? I mean, this, these, are, these are very broad indicators, but I just wanted to touch upon a few things real quickly. Uh, and, and they are, you know, from, from um, across the county level, so we, we, we can compare them at some point. But if you, if you look at some of these graphs broadly, I mean, in looking at unemployment rate, obviously there was a, there was a spike you know, at the time of the recession. It has come down. Uh, in, in Henry County, we are looking at a resident population that has kept growing pretty consistently over time. Again, I mean, the base is not that great, but we are looking at a scenario where, OK, the education, if you look at it, has come down. The number percentage of people with a bachelor's degree has actually reduced a little bit on a, on a, on a small difference scale. Um, the per, per capita personal income has kind of held itself to some extent with minor ups and downs. But the overall scenario, again, in Henry County is generally not so bad. It's, it's a reasonably, go ahead, please. Yeah. That, uh, that, that corner graph. yeah. <coughs> right. All the technology, the young people, and you know, they're not, there's not the traditional workplaces they're going to. Yes. Working from home. How does that really factor into that? It does. I mean, I think, I think first of all, the college-going population across Metro Atlanta is itself reducing. 
which is which is a problem not only in Atlanta actually it's it's true for the country that there aren't that many high school students coming out uh, to fill the colleges that 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 are out there and therefore all universities are trying to reach out to non-traditional students people who did not go through a college at the beginning of their career and so on so that's number one the second factor also is you know, some of there are people who are probably looking at the economy. The economy is kind of coming back, and a lot of them therefore don't go to college. They are getting into jobs right away, and and we are facing that every day, particularly with our professional programs, MBA program. Um, the Clayton State MBA program has about 200 students, so it's a it's one of the top 10 programs in the Metro Atlanta, including private schools, uh, by enrollment. And one third of our students are international students. And one of the things that we keep seeing is when the economy, now that it's coming back, we see less of domestic students sometimes and, and more of international students. But of course, again, it kind of levels out after some time. So the spikes come and then the, you know, the troughs kind of level out. But that's a factor and, and it's not atypical. But let's look at some of the other counties real quickly. Now, here we had a few things about Henry County, a few broader indicators, $110 million industrial development revenue bonds have been, have been done. A um, 1,000 jobs created last year is kind of what, what they, they put out. Um, there is an organization called One Henry. And these are just some examples, but One Henry is an intergovernmental commission, right? Which, which started off as, as a nodal agency for economic development office, chambers of commerce, uh, higher education institution, the school system, uh, the water board, the, you know, and so on. So the public service board, everybody came together and became member of One Henry Commission. And the need for that was evident. In fact, last year I went to the One Henry meeting in Savannah. It was a two-day affair, you know, everybody stayed over there. And one, I mean, you could see that these different agencies are not working in unison. They have their own goals, they compete with each other, uh, and even sometimes actually they are you know, fighting against each other. It's almost like that. And that's where these intergovernmental commissions are good. So that's, they have started that. There have been some investment from, you know, Home Depot there, there's a Whirlpool facility that has come up. There is some excitement. I mean, you know, when you're looking at places like McDonough, the whole city center right there in Henry County, there is a feeling that, okay, there are companies coming back, there are people coming back, some new restaurants have come up, you know, and so on. The quality of life is a big factor in anything, any economic revival, as we all know, and, and that is not just businesses, but it is everything else. Like it's the quality of you know, restaurants and art and culture and, and, and music performance and so on. We keep talking about Spivey Hall, and, and I want to mention this at this point, and I'll come back later again. Spivey Hall is something you may have heard of, is in the campus of Clayton State University. And it has been one of the most well-known performing arts venues in the, in the metro Atlanta area. Supposedly one of the best acoustic systems in the southeast of the United States, uh, something that we, we really, you know, it's, it's an asset on the campus. And we, we are always thinking of how to use Spivey Hall and kind of integrate it more with the university and, and, and synergize and, and get benefits from that. But it's definitely a big presence. And it's all of that quality of life factor that becomes really critical. So again, there are some things that are going on in Henry County that we know seem to be positive. We'll come to some of the negatives more as a discussion point, uh, which, which still remain. Clayton County, much more of a problem still, even though Marta is back. If you look at some of the, some of the graphs here, um, I mean, the difference again between the first point and the last point in higher ed is not much, but the number of people with bachelor's degree is coming down. Um, the number of per, the per, per capita income has been growing slowly. The, the, again, you have to look at the scale carefully. Um, the resident population has been reasonably growing. It's not too bad. Unemployment rate has dipped. Again, retail has come in. I'll talk about some of the investments in Clayton County. Even in Clayton County, which is probably the, one of the most lagging counties within the metro, south metro area, there is a sense that, okay, there are jobs being created to some extent. So there is, there is a positivity around that. And these are some examples of that. Uh, obviously, there is the airport. There is Fort Gillem. Right? I mean, there is a saying that in Clayton County, all the four major interstates in Atlanta run through Clayton County. Uh, so locationally, logistically, it's, it has an advantage. Close to the airport, the main train route to, from Savannah to, to, to Atlanta, all of that is, is, is great. The Fort Gillem industrial facility, as we all know, is becoming a huge logistics hub. 
Uh, Kroger has set up its own distribution center there. There are other companies coming in, slowly coming in. And again, we are a part of some of that because the university is obviously brought onto the table whenever all these economic discussions are held. Um, I, some of our faculties, our president, Dr. Tim Hines, have been very closely involved with some of these projects. And it, it's exciting that, you know, they, everybody is, a lot of them have interest, but everybody wants to see other companies there. So it's almost like it's a, it's a game, like, right? Everybody wants to see, okay, there are, if there are other four, then I'm there, but otherwise I'm not. And a lot of the discussions go over on who's going to take the plunge, which of these companies are going to be the first few to come and invest, and then we have the others that would follow. So there is a lot of branding efforts that are needed. In fact, one of the key themes around whatever we are observing in the South Side is a lot about brand, is a lot about image, is a lot about mood, uh, you know, the general mood and enthusiasm, you know, the feeling of comfort, okay, this is where some growth will come, so let's invest there. It, it is a lot of that, and that depends on the people, obviously, that are involved in marketing these counties and, and trying to get investment into them, but also on, on the associated infrastructure, really. I mean, it's, it's the overall environment that is, that is critical, and therefore a wholesome economic development is necessary. Uh, it, to a lot of extent, this kind of what we are seeing on the south side of Atlanta is, you know, other cities have gone through that. You know, there have been parts of other large American metropolitan cities that have had severe downs and some ups and again downs and so on. I mean, if you look at Detroit, you will see the, the, the graph, right? The peak, the, 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 the trough, and then again, kind of some kind of revival. So it, it's really interesting as to how urban economics and, and planning and, and development can come in with the economics of it, of course, but also the non-business factors. And again, the question is, do businesses invest in these quality of life activities? And, and, and not a lot of it has been seen there yet. I mean, companies have come in, but they haven't really looked at anything outside because they are, they are just back. A lot of them have just invested. Chime Solutions is an example I wanted to talk about. Chime Solutions at South Lake Mall right here will generate about 1,000 jobs, and it's a call center. It's a call center that has an office up north. They had a presence in Alpharetta, I believe, and then they are down south now. And, and the cost in terms of operation as well as the, as the labor costs are extremely competitive in, in Clayton County and in the south side. So it makes business sense. But again, the progress of that particular project has been extremely slow. I mean, we are tracking the project, and it, it's been very slow. Please. Yeah, just to echo a comment that this woman over here made sure. a few minutes ago about the local education. If the companies aren't spending a lot investing in the community, it's partly because their employees don't live in the community. Right. And that pressure isn't discussed in the lunchroom, in the cafeteria, or at, at meetings about, geez, the local school's really in trouble. Mm, mm, they don't mm. feel any of that pressure. Right. Their employees live in Alpharetta or Dunwoody or somewhere else in the community. Now, I would just throw out just an idea and ask you, I mean, is there anything more important than improving the local schools to revive the economy? You're absolutely right. I mean, the local school factor is probably one of the most important. One of the things they are working on now is a charter school. You know, the charter school politics has been big, and, and uh, you know, again, that's a, its own history. But a, a new charter school, I hear, is finally going to come up in Clayton. And it's going to be somewhere close to the university, may even be around the university, very close to the campus. And, and yes, I mean, I think the realization is there, the understanding is there, and not only in Clayton, but also in Henry and Faith and so on. Peachtree City, when we see as an example, it's an island, in a way, where the school is good, People have come in and settled, uh, and, and a lot of the people who live in Peachtree City actually have a high quality of life because of all the associated factors. Highest golf cart per capita, right? Uh, so, but again, one of the things that really, it's, it's a lot of implementation issues that we see every day, right? It, it's, it's the slow progress through the steps that has been um, a real deterrent. So it, it, you're absolutely yeah, right. Guess, you know, it, it is one of the most critical the factors. That would be. Why even make that charter school part of your overview? I've seen parts of Nashville. My daughter lives in Nashville, and her daughter goes mm. to charter school. Mm. And that charter school made all the difference. Right. In that community that she's in. That's absolutely right. 
And again, I mean, you know, the school districts have, I mean, I'm not privy to the entire information, but what I understand is that the charter school proposal in Clayton particularly has been around, it's been floated, it's been, you know, debunked, it came back, you know, it's been, it has had its own uh, cycle. But finally, it's, it's probably going to happen. And again, it is extremely important that, that the school system improves. The school system lost its accreditation in Clayton at one point, it got it back now so that is resolved and 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 things seem to be going reasonably you know on the on the positive trajectory in the state school system the henry county school district has had some improvements over the last few years we know that you know not only through the dual enrollment but also through um, you know just teacher pay and stuff like that they have they have been working on it this, the, the head of the school district uh, we he was a part of the intergovernmental commission uh, and faith is is a little better anyway to start with. But again, there is a big difference between the north side counties and the south when it comes to the school districts. And again, you know, b because coming from New Jersey, northern New Jersey particularly, the school system was one of the best factors why people and companies invested in northern New Jersey for all these years because the public school system was so good that, you know, private schools really were not needed and, and, and of course the taxes were very high, but, but it really worked out there. So it is, it is absolutely one of the most critical factors. There's no question about that. And again, it, that wholesome development is a question that we keep thinking about, but there, there isn't a lot of that, that that has still been happening. It is extremely important for everybody to come together uh, and, and for example, corporations to understand the value of that. And probably it's not the need of the hour because a lot, a lot of their employees are living there. So there is no pressure at this point to do that. differentiation between some of its <coughs> other, the other counties, especially Clayton, and yeah. the um, southern region in the southern part of the city, city, has it capitalized on its uniqueness? Wonderful golf courses, tremendous uh, health care facility, yes. hospital, yes. great deal of ambulance and first responders, and they haven't capitalized on that. Instead, they've suffered from all of the problems in Clayton County yes. and everything else. And I'm wondering, and, and uh, th that's absolutely right. It, it absolutely is mind-boggling, and, and I feel the exact same way. I think people in Henry County, to some extent, realize that. I have heard discussions about how to convert the racetrack, the Atlanta Speedway, into more of an, a tourist venue, right? And because there are things one can do there which are not being done. There are tourism dollars that are not used. There are SPLOS projects that are not necessarily implemented. There is a lot of that that we s you see every day. Uh, and and it's, it's really related to a, a coordinated approach and a confidence that we can, you know, now there, there's a lot of discussion in Henry County about building data centers uh, for big data. And there's a real talk about that. It's a good idea. Uh, and again, it would involve some, some concerted effort to bring some large investors in and bring those data centers down there. There are ones in North, obviously. So is it the xenophobia or just the, the old gods still in control and, and Entrepreneurs, problem with all of them. Right. Entrepreneurs have to move from venture capital is real estate, and nothing else is understood here. The, the, is it yeah. The, the, uh, stay with, with, with the old tradition and they can't get out of it. It's so bad that their mindset is that, and you can't move to the new mindset, is, is, or the political structure. I, I mean, uh, probably a lot of these factors are relevant, but definitely I know that there was a, there was a survey done on young entrepreneurs and, and tech people about whether they would like to think about relocating to Henry County for with some of the technology companies that are at least talking about coming in, not, not a lot have. And, and the, the, the survey didn't yield a very positive response. I mean, most of the people said, you know, we don't know what that is. Why, why should we be there? It, it did not yield any major momentum. The younger population, particularly the technically qualified population, have been less, it, 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 hasn't, it hasn't been exciting enough for them to come in and stay and live there or work there. They don't see the value. And part of that is because of the communities that have just been running the sort of traditional and old way. I mean, it has not been as receptive to new ideas as, as, the, as many of the other counties up towards the north side have been in terms of new businesses, new types of people, immigrants, you know, that whole thing about, about economic rejuvenation hasn't been as strong on many of these places in, in Henry, for example. So there is a realization, and again, hopefully, 
there, there is some talk also about um, you know creating kind of a tech park. I mean, there are some old factories, uh, Bratton Strat, I think, one of the factories that got out of business. It was a, they, they are trying to do. Um, they are going to. They are talking about building a technology, um, like a tech park kind of thing, and in entrepreneurship zone based on that over there, which will bring some new investors and so on. But again, you know, it's all ecosystem, right? So every, it, it's just like shared services are there going to be those shared services that they can use are other folks going to come in that are going to draw the rest and everybody's waiting for the innovators to come in the imitators are waiting on the side uh, wanting to see whether somebody else is is in there so it's again a lot of it is not just a tax break or facilities i mean that kind of thing is more easy and i think they are seriously thinking and doing that in terms of giving space giving you know, some kind of tax break if somebody comes in or some kind of other facilities, physical infrastructural facilities. But it's, it's more of the mindset. It's more of the optimism or, or lack of it that is probably a, a factor in, in, in that kind of uh, economic region. But again, there, there are strong reasons for some of these countries to actually keep coming back and, and build themselves on, on some of the resources they have. I mean, if we can, the, the, there, there is potential it's a question of getting the momentum to, to work. And, and that has to have leadership, but also it has to have a degree of sort of perception around uh, the, the uh, optimism associated with that. The university itself suffers from that a lot because Clayton State, first of all, the Clayton name, you know, sometimes a deterrent, but also it's just that whole feeling that is, you know, is that the right area? Can I get a job when I graduate from the university? Uh, because the, the surrounding area doesn't seem like a lot of opportunities. But again, that's where we are trying to really play a role and say, well, there are sectors where you can get a very good job if you graduate, because there are three industries in that area that are doing very well. And I'm coming to that in a, in a second. I just have a quick faith. You know, faith is doing much better. It's, 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 it's the star in, in that area. Uh, Peachtree City is a part of this. Uh, and generally, the trends are good. The school district is actually the best in that area, um, Faith School District. And uh, so that has paid off to some extent in some kind of economic way. But again, I mean, some factors are still, yet the unemployment rate is a little high. It's come down, but it's still there. The per capita income is kind of saturating. But one of the key factors that has always been there is what kind of, you know, everybody talks about Peachtree City as the, you know, the pilots live there, right? I mean, it's, it's Delta and so on. Uh, and there is some Panasonic and a few other tech companies. Not enough. There is no, it's not a cluster yet. And, and that still creates a problem because if enough companies don't come in, they don't have that uh, networking effect as, as an industrial cluster benefits. And, and that's, that's still an issue. So some comeback factors, and I, I, there is more, but NCR opened a big service center, Sinclair Systems. 70% of Faith County's population works outside the county. So Faith is actually a place where people want to live, but there aren't enough jobs, the right kind of jobs. And so, I mean, Clayton State University employees, a lot of them live in Peachtree City and in Faith County. Uh, you can see that you know, they are going out of county to work. Uh, this is Coeta, Noonan. Um, you know, again, kind of overall a reasonably positive situation. A lot of new things have come into Newnan in that area. I'll just show some of the highlights here. There's a healthcare hub. Coeta County is becoming big on healthcare. That's their big focus. And it makes sense because there is a, a need for good healthcare facilities in that area. Obviously, there's a cancer treatment center of America that has set up a huge facility. There's Health South. Uh, West Georgia has a campus. Uh, and then there are, you know, Mercer University has started offering classes and so on. Uh, there has been a big, there was a big hospital that has been converted into a University of West Georgia campus in Newnan, which is really a major facility. So it's like a real second campus. Clayton State's second campus in Peachtree City, which we have, is also doing pretty well. I, you know, so, so Clayton State is not entirely in Morrow in, in Clayton, even though that's our main campus. The Peachtree City campus is also there. And we have always done well there, but it has a capacity constraint. We don't have, you know, we haven't grown there, which, which we could, I guess, at some point. This is Spalding, and again, so the macro indicators are, are not that bad, is, is really one of the major takeaways. If you look at the graphs, if you look at the charts, if you look at the numbers, south is growing. It's not growing as fast as the north side, but it's growing. 
and there is a potential to go beyond that hump you know and and really keep growing because there is that point of inflection that that is the real issue there you know can i cross that and 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 really get the momentum and some of the momentum might come from the counties actually working together which you don't hear i don't hear much at all all of them come to the metro atlanta chamber they are all represented there they are all represented atlanta regional uh, co council arc but we don't see the coordination within the county across the organizations as well as between the counties on development projects i mean we have been and that's where again the role of the university is very critical clayton state can bring these folks together because that's the job of the university we are you know neutral we are a political we are you know we are there to facilitate and there is discussion around it and we are really trying to take a leap forward in that our advisory board for the college of business has been very supportive about that a lot of them do come from these counties i mean i have a 25 member advisory board at that point i'm still growing the board and therefore you know i would like to you know also mention that that if you if you think that you would like to engage with clayton state you're you're you know we would like you to be on our on our advisory board and we have a college of business board we have center boards uh, and we have the university foundation board uh, Spalding, a lot of things are going on here too. There is a, there is a Japanese company that has invested, uh, there are some, uh, some technology companies, a Silicon Valley based company that has invested here. There, the, the food technology thing is really interesting. University of Georgia's Griffin campus has a, has a f it goes into, I guess, into Spalding as well, is, um, has, a, has a food facility, food technology, food incubator they call it. And that has been a very interesting food science kind of real local help for, for businesses to take advantage of. Uh, so um, the, 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 what I hear is that it has got real outreach for the UGA system in that area, in the south side, particularly with regard to food. And, and, um, and, and it, it's a big differentiator. Not every place has that. They are a part of the Work Ready Certified Commission. This is Rocktail. And it doesn't look very different, actually. I mean, of course, the, the education here is growing up. In some, we were seeing just the other way. Um, so, so that's a positive. We are, you know, part of Fulton, obviously, uh, for, for this area is also there, which is a part of, yes. Sure. That's a big rise, yes. Well, you know, I mean, in terms of absolute percent points, it's actually 23 to 25. So, but even at 2%, I mean, because that's the, the, the scale has been drawn like that, the, 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 even at 2% is not bad because when other places are going down, on, on, it seems like it's, it, and, and it's, um, it, looks, it, looks, it, it looks fairly positive. The, the thing is, I mean, you know, one of the factors there is, um, there are community colleges, some of the, from the two-year colleges I know, and some of the technical colleges that have invested in training facilities and, and outreach centers there, which has been one of the drivers for getting more people to finish their education. There is a complete Georgia college program, which has been very popular uh, in the system, but has particularly worked well in some of these places. And that's really a college completion program where somebody brings in the credits they already had when they went to college earlier. And, and then they can work with the advisors and kind of chalk out a path to graduation, which really has, you know, that is a very innovative thing that, that, that I have seen because in most other states you don't see a program that is so well geared towards college completion. It, it, it has really worked well within the university system of Georgia and, and, and definitely in these um, counties where there were a large number of students who didn't finish college, who had 70% done, 80% done, but never actually completed their college education. When they come back, they are getting some credits out of their experience or, or equivalent work, uh, clip and other stuff, and, and they, are, they are graduating faster. So that might have been a factor also. Yes, yes, yes. We are a part of the University System of Georgia. There is something called the, um, I'll just skip to some of this, but there, there is something called the Board of Regents Advisory Council in every discipline, right? So in business, for business schools, there is a RAC, there's a Regents Advisory Council for the Board of Regents of the University System of Georgia. Um, it's, it's the 30 business deans that are members of that. I actually, this July 1st, I became the chair of that RAC for one year. It's a one, 
one year, and and it's it's a you know you rotate out, but but it's a good exposure, and it, it also allows us to kind of frame some policies at that level and 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 work across all the colleges and do something jointly. So it's a, it's a very good network to be a part of. You're so. Vice chair immediately. I became vice chair as soon as I came because the vice chair, who was a dean in another university, I think left his position in the middle of the year and there was a vacancy, so I came in. And yeah, I mean, I got into something I didn't know what this was about because I didn't know anyone, but it, you know, I've gotten a lot of help and it was very interesting. It really worked out. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Five percent. I agree. Yes, and only 5% of business schools worldwide are accredited by AACSB. AACSB is the leading business accreditation for business schools in the world. I mean, you know, Emory has AACSB, Harvard, I mean, everybody, that's, that's it. There is nothing better than that. And we are, we have the accreditation for a long time. So the question for us is, you know, there are only five universities in Metro Atlanta that have AACSB accreditation. And the other four are in the north side. So we do have a, a good positioning. It's a very good business school, about 45 faculty members, 1,200 students. And again, it's a lot of, it's really the branding issue for us right now. We want to be known more, you know, we want to engage more with the, with the community and with, with everyone so that our students get the best jobs and the best experience. That's been the big factor, but yes, that's, that's. Three big things. I mean, we are seeing logistics and supply chain in the south side is, is, has always been big and definitely something that we have right on top of our minds. Um, film and entertainment and entrepreneurship and innovation. Everywhere we go, we are talking about accelerators, we are talking about incubators, we are talking about all that. All these three are the three pillars of the College of Business at Clayton State. So the way our strategic plan has been developed now on the last year is to focus on these three things on the top of everything else. Now we do, we have a program in accounting, we have a program in marketing, we have a program in management, all of that is there, which everybody else has, right? But the three centers of excellence or real differentiation are in logistics supply chain, film and entertainment, and an entrepreneurship and innovation. Now the first two, we really are different from the other colleges in the system. There are very few that have programs like this. The second, film and entertainment, no other business school has a program yet. We are the first one that developed it. Uh, supply chain, there are colleges. G Georgia Southern has a large program, but not so much in this area. So I think we still have an advantage. We got into it early. We developed an endowed chair professorship in that area. And then, you know, it's been slow development, but we have grown in that. The third one is a whole different story. Because entrepreneurship and innovation, I mean, obviously there's, you know, you're looking at Georgia Tech, which is large in that. Every school has large centers and activities in that space. And one of the questions for us was how do we differentiate ourselves while focusing on entrepreneurship and innovation? Because every student that we talk to nowadays say, I want to be an entrepreneur. Everyone wants to be an entrepreneur. That's, that's, been, that's been the finding. And even if they work in a large company, the focus is very much on that. I mean, every student wants to be a part of a business plan competition. They want to do this personal 30, you know, elevator pitches. Uh, they want to take a part in these things. They have some idea that they want to develop. We see that all the time. The question is how do we take them forward and go through the steps. So there's an organization called TAI, the Indus Entrepreneurs, that, uh, that some, I've seen some few there and in RC2 and I have become a part of that as well. And so, you know, we are trying to engage our students in some of these communities. Uh, there's a CEO network where, where there have been a, a competition that we participated in and so on. So these, these three pillars are really critical. Let me come, I mean, I have, you know, I, and I, the, the slides are with you. We, we, are, we are sharing all the slides, so you will, you will see. Yeah. Uh, uh, the emphasis on these three in terms of, if you look at it in terms of number of students, I would say that close to, I would say about 40% of our students are in these three in the business school because there are still traditional disciplines, right? I mean, there is accounting and will always be. But in terms of, so number of students wise, it's 40%, let's say. But in terms of actual focus, it's a lot more than that. This is where we are really trying to differentiate, you know, from faculty hiring to marketing and advertising, uh, to positioning and branding. We really are trying to say that if you are thinking about the Georgia film industry, think of Clayton State. That's kind of the positioning that, in fact, we had an aircraft hangar. We had an aircraft maintenance program at one time, and there was an aircraft hangar that the university owned, which was not used anymore. So we converted that into a film production studio. 
And a lot of independent filmmakers in the South Side are using that now. They have just started using that for their, for their, for their movie projects. So it's, it's exciting. In fact, two weeks back, our university was shut down pretty much, not the entire university, major buildings, because we were shooting the Captain America 3 movie on our campus. <laughs> so if you see that movie later on, you, you, should, you will be able to see Clayton State. Does Clayton State have a curriculum Yes, yes. There are four types of things we are doing there. One is we have an undergraduate Bachelor of Arts program in film production, which is a technical type of program, right? It's, it's ca cameras and the lights. Then in the business school, we have introduced a program in film and entertainment management, which focuses on film accounting, event planning, project management, marketing, you know, sponsorships and agencies and how the agents behave and all that. It's the business aspect of the industry. And that program is very popular too, even though, you know, we have to work out the jobs and there is a lot of work to do in terms of exactly what kind of things come out. But I, there is a demand, there's a pretty big demand. And then the, the third thing is our small business development center which is a part, the College of Business hosts the SBDC of the South Side. And it's a very large, it's actually a very well-functioning small business development center, right? So if somebody, there is a certain size below which they serve, because it has to be a really small business and all that, but they are, they have three, we have three consultants full-time and a few part-time consultants who work with small businesses on behalf of the federal government, right? There's the US SBA, the Small Business Administration that runs that. So they have some programs in film and entertainment now, which is basically reskilling and retooling small businesses to work for that sector. And the fourth thing we are doing is continuing education, which is really short-term courses one day on, you know, uh, and there was a program on, on hairstylists for movie industry and a very well attended program that continuing it ran for a day. It was like oversubscribed and they ran it again and that got filled. So, so it, is, it is actually very exciting. In fact, I have a slide right here which talks about some of the things that are going on. I mean, we know that it has created $5.1 billion, $5 billion for the state last year. Yes. So, In the film and entertainment and, and production? Yeah, the aircraft maintenance program was a part of uh, the. We, we do have a College of Informatics and uh, which does some of the film production type of things, along with the College of Arts and Science, which also does the film production courses. Uh, there is no engineering degree program at Clayton State, but there is, you know, informatics computers, mathematics, those kind of courses. The business school runs programs that are much more on the business side. So our supply chain and logistics is, I mean, we do teach project management. We have, you know, all those kind of things, but it is not the engineering side of that. So, the, so but again, supply chain has moved towards more of a managerial focus over the years to some extent anyway. We are not anywhere near Georgia Tech's field, that's very clear, you know, that's, the technical system is different, but our, our focus has really been on the business aspects of those, of those fields. And so we do differentiate on that. But again, I understand that without the technical knowledge to some extent, um, a student would not be useful in the industry. I mean, but when you look at our supply chain students, they are not yet placed in Manhattan Associates. Even though we had somebody you know, come and talk to our students recently, we are trying to get them interested. That's not our market, but, but C.H. Robinson, uh, Norfolk Southern, they recruit our students in the supply chain space. So it's, it's been, yeah, we differentiate to some extent based on that. But that's, that's a great point and we need to coordinate more, even across colleges to some extent. I wanted to show you some of the movies that have been shot in Clayton County. Uh, you know, The Vampire Diaries was, was shot and um, one, one or two of those episodes. We had uh, the uh, um, uh, Catching Fire and Hunger Games was shot there. And again, I mean, it, it, not only this one right there, the Civil War Captain America is the one I was talking about, which was shot on our campus recently. Uh, there was all these movies have been shot there, which, uh, and then Pinewood Studios is, uh, is in Faith County and has become a huge draw for movie people, obviously, because it's a large uh, production house based in the UK that has invested there. And as you know, the Georgia Film Institute, which is the coordinating nodal agency for films, and film programs in the state is located uh, there. So there is, a, there is a lot of energy around that that the university has been a part of as well in five minutes. 
And then the third and last point was my, you know, was entrepreneurship and innovation, which uh, I'll, I'll finish with this picture of the campus. Um, you know, so, so again, these are the three spaces where we have focused very carefully and clearly. In the field of entrepreneurship and innovation, in the last part, we have developed a minor, which again, many other universities are also doing now, which is for the entire university. So one doesn't have to be in the business school to be able to take the minor. You, you can be in a, a, a chemistry graduate, one can be a music graduate, uh, and yet be an entrepreneur, right? And that's where we come in as a business school by, by offering that minor, which is basically five courses and a business plan competition on top of that, that uh, any student can do from the entire university. Uh, so these are the focus areas. The advisory board right now, as I said, we have 25. We are looking for more people. Uh, we have, we have executives from large companies, like you know, we have CNN, we have Coca-Cola, we have Deloitte, um, got someone from McKinsey and all that. But also we have local businesses, right? I mean, so we have a mix of these things. And there were people like Alan Vigil, his son actually, Mike Vigil. It's a large Ford dealer in, in the South Side. You know, so they have been a big supporter of the university over the years, and they, he's on the board and so on. So it's a mix of local and, and, and um, international businesses. The business advisory board is a global advisory board by definition. And we have somebody from India on the board, and he's actually a CEO of a company in India. He comes to Atlanta quite a lot, uh, and, and we have him on the board. He Skypes in otherwise. We have someone from Saudi Arabia who's on our board. We also have students in the university from about 32 countries overall, but the business school has uh, students from 12 countries. We are the most global part of the university, the business school. A third of our MBA is international. And one of the things based on my own life experience is I've been trying to internationalize um, the student body and we have signed six international collaborations last year um, with international schools. One in South Korea, one in India, one in Tunisia, which is very interesting. Uh, I, 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 you know, we really like it because of the challenges involved and the opportunities that it brings. Um, and then we have one in France, one in Germany, and one in Hungary. So, and we will expand a few more, and obviously we have to stop somewhere and, and consolidate those. But globalization is definitely on top of our mind. Uh, because again, if we, we just cannot compete within the system for the same students uh, all the time, we have to go out either out of state or out of the country and out of state has been, you know, for not a big thing for us so far, but out of the country has been um, really good. Because international students want to come to Atlanta. When you tell them this is Metro Atlanta, it works. They want to be in a big city. We had the same advantage in New Jersey where I was uh, in, my, in, in Montclair State, which had 22,000 students. And a lot of the students wanted to come there because it's only 12 miles from New York. Uh, yes. Yeah, no, we have to organize the events in a way that, that, that are attractive and that deliver some value. I mean, we do have a lot of events on the campus. We have speaker series, and that's where, again, I would, you know, request you to consider coming and speaking. You know, we have typically four speakers, plenary speakers, real big ones, every semester. So we have something called the Dean's Executive Speaker Series, which brings a CEO-level speaker. And then there are three speakers under something called the Jim Wood Speaker Series, which is also for you know, senior level C-suit people or just below, but, but very senior executives. And the idea is to have all students come there, they get extra credits, and the Dean Speaker Series is being moved to Spivey Hall. We are doing it in Spivey Hall from this coming fall semester. Yes, yes. So first of all, yes, the newsletter is outside. So I, I got a few copies and, and please pick them up and we will do more. Exactly. Thanks. It's also online and, and we'll, we'll keep working on this. We just started a lot of it. We just started because Clayton, you know, we needed some leadership. And, you know, when I came in, we have started a lot of new things that, that we need. Absolutely. Because I know other schools do those and we need those. So so but we will send out emails with our events um, through Narsi, right? You can get there. Because we would love, I mean, the last Dean's executive speaker was Ed Baker, uh, you know, of Atlanta Business Chronicle, owner of Atlanta Business Chronicle, right? And he had, it was a really good presentation, you know, he made and he talked about what he sees in the city and how it has changed. He really struck um, well with the audience. The, the false um, Dean speaker was um, Jenner Wood, who's the president and CEO of SunTrust Bank uh, Southeast. 
So we, we have been looking at high profile speakers and, and then Jim Wood speakers are also people who resonate very well with the audience and, and students and, and so on. The faculty typically come in. We invite our advisory board and again, it's open to everyone. So please try to come. You would, you know, it's a great way to network with everyone, see our students. If you want, you know, any if you want to be part of advisory boards, you know, please reach out to me. If you want to be a judge in an event, we have business plan competition, we have a sales competition, we have a personal pitch competition, we have you know, several such things that happen during a semester, uh, which draws students from other universities also. So in the, in the personal branding competition recently, or maybe the other one, the, the business competition, the business plan competition, three of the four winners were non-Clayton State students, the top three. And that actually helped us a lot because they did their own marketing when they went back. They put it on their newsletters and talked about their own website. So it's, it's, it's really great. And, and again, you know, for us, really what we need is to go beyond just people in that area that we know and invite you all to come down there and see you know, what's, what's going on. Uh, so that's another way to engage. Uh, you mentioned uh, Marcus coming in there. Yes. Is that more rail or is that bus? That bus. Rail At this point, bus, yes. Yes, and, and it's something that is exciting because I know when international students come, for example, they, they don't drive and uh, public transport makes a huge difference for them in terms of reaching, going to the mall or even coming to the airport or, or somewhere else. So yes, it's a positive development and I hope that it will help, uh, help Clayton County to be. It was there, Marta was in Clayton at one time and then got, uh, you know, we didn't have it and then now it's back. So that's good. And, uh, well, you know, I'm really, I mean, delighted to be here again because this is an, uh, an August group and to be a part here and to talk about our story and, and everything is, is just, it's just a great experience. So thank you.